Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today is the beginner's guide to the Apple Watch Series 9 where you're going to learn how to use the Apple Watch Series 9 to its full capacity. Let's get started. All right, so we've got the Apple Watch Series 9, we've got the iPhone 15 Pro here, but you can use any Apple Watch or iPhone you want, as long as it has the latest version of OS on it. Now, the reason we have the iPhone here is we're actually gonna open up the watch application on the phone here. It's gonna be very useful for us as I teach you the different settings and features you can use with your Apple Watch. Now, we're gonna start by going over the buttons, the gestures, and navigating the Apple Watch, but if you wanna skip ahead, there are chapters in the video description, so you can skip to exactly Exactly what you want to learn. Now the Apple Watch has two buttons on it and they're both located on the right side. You have your digital crown and you have your side button. When you press on the digital crown while your watch face is on, you'll be taken to your app library here where you can access different apps on your Apple Watch. To open an application, you're just going to tap on it and to navigate through those applications, you can just use swipes or even crown movements like this. I'm just rolling the crown like so. To exit applications, you just press on the crown again, and it'll bring you back to your watch face. Additionally, you can hide the watch face just by covering your hand over it. When you remove it, you'll see that the screen goes black. To wake the screen, you can just tap on it. You can also press on the digital crown, and it'll wake as well. And when you're wearing the watch, all you have to do to wake the screen is simply raise your hand, and the screen will wake up. Now the second button on the right side here, the side button here, if you press on it, it's gonna open up Control Center. This is a section where you have quick settings for your Apple Watch, and we'll go through these settings a little bit later in the video. But the second option for this side button is to press and hold it. So if ever you need to turn off your Apple Watch, that's where it's going to be. So you press and hold, and you'll see a little power button appear at the top. You can tap on that power button right there, It'll give you this option to power off and you're just going to slide to power off your Apple Watch. Turning the Apple Watch back on is just as simple. You're just going to press and hold on that side button until you see the Apple logo. And it usually takes about 30 seconds for the Apple Watch to restart. Now moving back to our app library of our Apple Watch here, as you continue to use different applications on your Apple Watch, and perform various tasks, you may want to use something called the app switcher or multitask feature. And it used to be to double click on the side button, but recently it was changed to double clicking on the digital crown. So if you tap it twice or click it twice, it's going to bring up all your open apps that you have on your Apple Watch. And you can see I can scroll through each one with my finger. I can tap on them to quickly navigate to that application. I can tap it again and move over to another one. And you can additionally use the digital crown to move through these applications at the same time. While you get more familiar with your Apple Watch, you'll find that this is a much quicker way to navigate between applications as you're using them rather than going back to the home screen and searching around. Now, as you use your Apple Watch over time, you're obviously going to get notifications, just like on your iPhone. And you can bring up the notification center on your Apple Watch just by swiping down from the top. Now, I don't have any notifications here, mainly because this is a brand new Apple Watch, but this is where you'll be able to tap on those notifications or clear them when you're finished with them. Now, let's jump back in to that control center. So we're going to click on our side button there, and it's going to bring up those quick settings once again. And you can see we have quite a bit here, and we can actually edit them. The first quick setting is Wi-Fi. This is the Wi-Fi version of the Apple Watch, so we can configure to turn it on or off if we tap on that Wi-Fi option. You also have tap and hold, which brings up more options on various quick settings as well. If you tap on it, it's going to turn it off and on. If you tap and hold, you're brought to the extra options. The second option right here is a very useful one. It helps you find your iPhone. It's actually going to ping your iPhone if it's lost or you can't find it, and you'll hear a very loud chime. I'll give you an example. And if you don't find it, you can tap right here again to chime it a second time, but usually it is just so loud you'll find it, and I find that a lot of people with the Apple Watch say that this is their favorite feature. 
Below that is the percentage of your Apple Watch, so you can tap on it to see what the percentage is. You can also select low power mode, and this is going to save some battery if you're in a pinch. That way you don't end up burning through the battery of your Apple Watch. When you do turn it on, though, it's going to turn off the always-on display and limit some of the sensors, so keep that in mind as well. This one right here, if you tap on it, it silenced the Apple Watch, so now when you receive notifications, they won't chime through the Apple Watch. The next one here is the theater mode and it turns on a silent mode, keeps the screen dark until you tap the screen. So if you ever go to a movie theater, it's very annoying when the Apple Watch just shines through. Sometimes it can be embarrassing if you care about that kind of stuff. So you can read through that, then tap and it'll then engage. Also, you'll notice at the top, everything you have turned on will appear there in a small icon to let you know it's on. We'll just turn it off for now. Now this mode right here, this is just a walkie talkie. So I've personally never used it. I don't wanna offer you guys any advice on this because I'm not sure how it works. But uh, if you know about the walkie talkie or you wanna search it up, you can learn about that on your own time. But we'll move on to this setting right here. This one here is do not disturb. So again, very similar to the theater mode where it's not going to let anything come through, but you can set up different focuses with this do not disturb feature. I have a video on focus with the iPhone. So if you want to learn about how it works, you can check out my channel for that. This here is a flashlight, but really it's just changing the light on the Apple Watch to a very bright light. And you can see what it does right there. You can tap on it and switch between different colors. So if you need like an SOS kind of thing here, you can do that. And then it also has a red screen as well. So we'll open up our control center. This one here, airplane mode, it shuts down all cellular and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections to this device. So if you ever need to turn that on, you can. This one here flushes out the water. So if your Apple Watch ever gets wet, it'll flush out the water. It says press and hold the crown to turn water off. So you're just going to press and hold on the crown. And it'll eject all the water it can from the Apple Watch. So if you do use this in the shower or you swim with it or anything like that, that's a great way to flush it out of all that water. This right here will allow you to change the text size. So if you want to make it larger, you can, or smaller, you can do that. Very simple. The one to the left here will show you what you have available to connect to. So connect to a device down here. You can tap on that to connect to various devices. And then finally, this one right here, this is a hearing device option here. So if you have headphones on, or if you have a hearing device, you can control the volume here just by tapping on each side. Now to customize the control center, you can tap on edit here. And the only option you have is to add this school time mode, which again, I'm not very familiar on, so I'm not going to guide you. But if you want to remove any of these, you can just by tapping the minus icon. Or if you want to move them around, you can just tap and hold and then kind of scroll around where you want to put it. Flashlight seem like it might be a little useful. So I'll put it up there. When you're done, just click on that crown and you have now modified your control center. Now one of the coolest features with the Apple Watch is a new double tap feature, which allows you to perform various actions with the Apple Watch. For example, if your phone is ringing, you could double tap your fingers and answer that call. You can silence a notification and perform many other actions with it. Now at the time of this video, that feature is not available, but as soon as it is, you'll see a card appear right here and I'll pin it to this video so you can watch the full tutorial on how to use Double Tap with the Apple Watch Series 9 or Apple Watch Ultra. Now, one of the most popular features with the Apple Watch is the watch face and what it can show you. Now, you can control and customize this watch face. It's pretty simple, but there is a lot to it. So what you're going to do is tap and hold on the watch face there and it's gonna bring up the options you have. Now you can just swipe to the left to add a new watch face. You'll also be able to swipe around and select other watch faces that you have on your Apple Watch. I don't have any here, but if you wanna edit the watch face, you tap edit, but let's just add a brand new one here. So if we just tap on that, you can see we have all of these different watch faces to choose from and we can tap add. Now to make things a little bit simpler, we're going to use the iPhone for this tutorial. We're gonna tap on the face gallery at the bottom here, and you can see how much easier it's going to be to see those watch faces before you use them. It's just so much easier than going through it this way. So if you want, you can use the Apple Watch, but just for this video, we're going to use the iPhone. 
Now, to add a new watch face, all you do is just scroll around and choose the one you want. So let's say we wanted one of these white ones here. They look pretty cool. Actually, this one right here looks nice. You can then tap on it and you can configure it. So you can change the color here if you wanted it to be a different color, you could. You can scroll down here and change the symbols if you want. You can change the dial to be rectangular or it can be circular. Circular is giving you complications around it, so I'm going to stick with circular. And now we can configure what complications we see on the Apple Watch face. So the top left, it's got UV index. If I tap on that, I can select from all of these options. And complications are just these on the corners, and they may be different places on different watch faces, but you can see little bits of information. So we're just going to choose one here on the iPhone. So let's say we wanted the voice memos, so we'll put that there. We got temperature, which we're good with. A bottom left is timer. Let's say we wanted to use our heart rate. And then the bottom right here, we're gonna say battery. So that's what ours is going to look like. You can see those that I've added in. You can then tap add at the top here and it automatically changes on the Apple watch face. Now working with the watch face is simple too. First off, you can see all of those complications we added in. You can tap on them and it's gonna quickly open up that specific application. We'll just press on the crown again to return. If we tap on this right here, it's gonna bring up our battery icon. If we tap here, it's going to start measuring our heart rate. And I'll show you how that works a little bit later in the video. But those are how the complications work. And if you ever want to modify them, just tap and hold on the watch face, tap edit. You can then select your symbols again, just like on the iPhone using the digital crown. So we'll go back to the one we had and we're just going to swipe to the right. We can switch the dial again if we wanted to. We'll just go back. We can change the color. So if we weren't happy with the color or maybe you're going somewhere where you don't want the darker color, you can choose a different one. And then again, you can modify the complications just by tapping and scrolling through the options here. Very simple, very similar to the iPhone. So if you can figure it out on the iPhone, most likely you'll be able to figure it out on the Apple Watch. To confirm everything, you press the digital crown and then you tap on the watch face. Now let's take a look at some of the health options and sensors that are available with the Apple Watch. We'll start with the heart rate monitor. Now this one's pretty simple. It's a simple heart rate monitor for your watch. You wanna keep the Apple Watch obviously on your wrist fairly tightly in the right position. You don't wanna be moving or talking to get the most accurate results. I'm at 102. I've been talking this whole time. I'm not very comfortable in this position here, so maybe that's why. But if you scroll down, you'll see your ranges. Usually I'm in a better range than that, but you can see the difference and your heart rates, resting, walking average, and so on. The next one that we'll take a look at is the blood oxygen level. And that's this one right here with the red and blue kind of circle. We'll tap on that. And it's gonna give you some tips to help you measure. So we'll tap next. Make sure your watch is not too low on your wrist. So you wanna keep it higher up. I tend to keep it uh, fairly regularly in the right spot anyway, and they want you to have it nice and snug. Saying to keep your watch facing up and try not to move, resting your wrist on a table can be helpful. So we'll just do that and we'll tap done. So let's go ahead and tap start and we'll get our blood oxygen level within 15 seconds. I'll fast forward this for you. And there we go, we've got 95% oxygen level. You can learn more about that there as well. And the last one that we're going to take a look at is the ECG option here. And for this one, we're just going to scroll and you're going to see this little icon here with the kind of jagged lines there. We're going to tap on that. To take an accurate ECG, your Apple Watch needs to be snug on the wrist, selected in settings. Currently, that is your left wrist. So make sure you have it on the right wrist that you're using. And from this page here, hold your finger on the crown like this. You've got 30 seconds. I'll fast forward it as well for you. And you'll be able to see that this particular ECG does not show signs of atrial fibrillation, but does show a higher heart rate. So those are the three health sensors you have with the Apple Watch. Again, take your results with a grain of salt. Obviously, check with your doctor. You can bring these results to your doctor. Some of these can actually help save your life, like the atrial fibrillation has done that with many people, but this is 100% not to replace a doctor, visits to a doctor, or anything like that. It's for your own use. 
And I would strongly recommend that if you do see any kind of notifications that pop up with things like that, contact your doctor especially with that atrial fibrillation notification. So now let's go over how the applications work, how you can organize them, delete them, and add new ones to your Apple Watch Series 9. For starters, navigating through like I showed you is just moving around. You can also use the digital crown if it's easier. But if you want to delete an application, as there are probably quite a few here you'll never use, you're just going to tap and hold on the screen you'll see that they'll start shaking and there's little X's beside the applications. You can then just tap on the application to remove it. So let's say we didn't want this tips app here. We can just tap on it and it's going to allow us to delete the app right here. We can tap delete and just like that, it's gone from our Apple Watch. You can always reinstall these applications so it's not like the end result here. And to do that, you're going to use this little app store icon here. We'll tap on the app store. And if it's your first time, just go to the bottom and tap continue. But we can scroll through here and see some applications that are available on the App Store here. We can also search for them right here and type something in and find what we're looking for. And you can actually access this on your iPhone as well. You just want to tap Discover right here and then Explore Watch Applications. And it'll open up an App Store on your iPhone that's a lot easier to download various apps. So you just want to find one that you want go through them either on your Apple Watch or your iPhone. So let's just say we wanted this flight tracker. We're just gonna tap on it, tap get, and we'll just double click on our iPhone and it'll start installing. As soon as it's done installing, it'll appear on your Apple Watch as well. So we'll just go back to our home screen here. Most likely it'll appear down there. And there it is. You can then open up that new application and use it as you would any other application on your device. Now let's talk about Siri on the Apple Watch Series 9 and how you can use Siri to improve your productivity. Now, if you don't know, Siri is your personal assistant with your Apple Watch, very similar to the Siri on your iPhone, can perform various tasks. And to activate Siri, you can press and hold on the digital crown. Siri will pop up just like that. And you can ask Siri anything you want. For example, what's the weather today in New York? It's currently cloudy and 19 degrees in New York, the United States. And anything that does pop up from Siri, you can interact with it just by touching the screen. You can ask Siri sports scores, questions, to set timers, reminders, notes, and things like that. Now, there are a whole bunch of other ways that you can activate Siri. For starters, you can say, hey, Siri, and Siri will begin to activate on your Apple Watch. But you can access all the different settings in the settings application on your Apple Watch. And that's gonna transition us to the next section, which is settings. So we'll open up settings. And because we're talking about Siri, let's just scroll right down to the Siri settings here. And you can see the first one is listen for Hey Siri. So we'll tap on that and you can set it to listening for that command, or you can have it listen to just Siri or the Hey, you know what command or you can turn it off completely if you don't like it the next one is raise to speak so all you have to do is take your apple watch raise it up to your mouth start speaking and siri will automatically be there ready to go the digital crown i showed you that already and you can disable any of these just by tapping on those switches the next one here you might want to use is the Siri history. You can delete the history of everything you've talked about with Siri or asked Siri. Tap there, delete the history right here, and now your Siri history will be deleted. We can dismiss that and go back. So that's how you use Siri with the Apple Watch Series 9. Continuing with the settings here, we first have notification settings. So this ties into how you're going to receive notifications on your Apple Watch. You have the identicator right here, and this one is just a red dot that appears at the top. Anytime you receive a notification, it'll appear there. It's a good feature to have on. That way, if you miss something, you'll know that there's a notification just by seeing that red dot. You can turn it on or off. You can have it show a summary when the Apple Watch is locked. You can tap to show a full notification. So when the summary appears, you can just tap and it'll show you the whole thing. Show notifications on wrist down. And then Siri can announce your notifications if you want. So you can figure this the best that you want. For me, though, I just leave everything as it is. Scrolling down a little more, you'll notice that a lot of these options are the same as you saw in the quick settings from the control center. But this time, if you tap on them, it's going to take you straight into the more advanced settings for those specific options. And there's a little bit more functionality to it as well. 
So let's open display and brightness. Do you ever need to control the brightness of your Apple Watch? This is where you can do it. You have three bars to choose from. I don't really notice a difference too much, but if maybe if you're in a super bright scene, you may want to raise that brightness. You have your text sizes and bold sizes, but another big feature is the always on display. So your Apple Watch will always stay on like this. It'll just fade to a darker version. But if you don't want that always on display to appear, you can change that right here. Just tap on it, turn it off, and you also have some options here that you can use as well. I personally like it on and I leave it that way. You have some wake options here. So wake on wrist raise. So if you have your Apple Watch on and you kind of flip your wrist up, it'll wake the screen up, wake on crown rotation, and then the wake duration. Now wake duration is something I always change. It's set to 15 seconds by default and then it'll fade out. I leave it on 70 seconds. I think it's mainly because I make these videos, but if you do need more time with the screen on, this is where you go. Continuing down, we'll look at sounds and haptics, and this is where you can control the volume of your Apple Watch. So when you receive notifications, how loud it's going to be, you can tap on the right side here, and it'll give you a little preview of how it's going to sound. You can lower it in the same sense here. You also can silence your device from here. Haptic alerts here you can select from the default and prominent. Haptics are the vibrations you feel with the Apple Watch. Crown haptics, the crown actually vibrates as you turn it as well. If you don't like that, you can turn that off. And then system haptics, so it'll play system haptics when you control and interact with things. Passcode, if you ever want to add a passcode or turn off your passcode, that's where you would do it. And then we have SOS, and this is a very big one. So SOS and fall detection, crash detection, they all fall into this section here. And these are things that could save your life in various situations. To activate the SOS, you're going to press and hold on that side button again, very similar to earlier when we turned off the iPhone. But you can see we have our medical ID, we have compass backpack, and we have the emergency call. Now, if you swipe that emergency call, it'll start to call the emergency services. Now, the fall detection, a very popular one that has saved people countless times. If we tap on it, you can see that fall detection is on by default. And what this is going to do is initiate an emergency SOS if you take a hard fall and don't seem to move for a certain amount of time. Before the call, the Apple Watch is going to alert you. If nothing happens and you don't respond to that alert, then it'll perform that call. And you can read through all of this here. I strongly recommend you do. But you can set it to only on workout, so when you're working out, or always on. And when you turn it to always on, it does tell you the more physically active you are, the more likely you are to trigger the fall detection due to high impact activity that can appear as a fall to the watch. So just keep that in mind as well. So if you confirm that always on, make sure that you're vigilant when you're doing super active things that it could trigger the uh, response. Next is crash detection. It'll call after a serious crash. If you tap on that, you can read about it. I recommend you do that. And then you have your medical ID. And I always tell people to at least add in the basics, especially if you do have specific medical complications, entering those there. Emergency services and to access this medical ID, even if your phone or watch is locked, they're able to access and see that information and potentially save your life. Now let's talk about the battery and go over a couple of things that'll save some battery with your device. When we open up the battery, you can see your battery percentage. You can also see a little icon here that's showing you how much battery is being used when. You can also check your battery health here. And from here, you can have the optimized charge limit on. Read what this does, but it's a good feature that will kind of help the battery degrade less over time. But things that will trigger your battery on your Apple Watch to run out faster is having the brightness on too high, having a lot of notifications passing through, and constantly using the screen and waking up the Apple Watch. Those are the main sources of battery drainage on these devices. So if you can limit those or find some sort of median with that, you'll improve your battery on this device. You can continue to go through the settings and configure them the way you want, but those are the main ones that I would suggest for a new user of the Apple Watch. Now let's go over updating your Apple Watch. From time to time, Apple will release updates. For the most part, you'll be prompted to run those updates. But if you're not, tap on General, tap on Software Update, and you can configure automatic updates on or off here. Just turn that switch on. 
However, my Apple Watch is up to date. If an update appears here, you can tap on it and run that update. Follow the instructions on screen and run that update. Now there are some tips that you can use with the Apple Watch. First one here is the orientation. If at any time you wanna switch wrists, you can switch from the left wrist to the right wrist right here in the settings. We're in the general tab once again. We have a nightstand mode here. Basically, when you put your Apple Watch on a charger, it's gonna go into this nightstand mode. And if you have an alarm with it, it's going to gently brighten in the minutes leading up to that alarm. So it's gonna help you wake up a little less abruptly for the most part. Now, taking screenshots is available with the Apple Watch you, as well. You just have to enable the setting right here. Once it's enabled, you can take a screenshot by just pressing the side button and the digital crown at the same time. So if you, let's say, wanted to take a screenshot of this right here, you're, you're just going to press both of those buttons at the same time. And those screenshots will appear in your photos on your iPhone. Now, another Apple Watch tip you can use with any Apple Watch is to change the view of this screen. So we've got this clustered look of apps, but if we open the settings application and scroll down a little bit here, you'll see app view. And if we tap on that, we can change it to a list. Now, when we go back to our main page with all our apps, you can see it's in this list view. It's very unique. It makes things a little bit harder to access, but it does change the look of it. You can always tap grid view from that section to go back to the original, but it's a good feature if you want to stand out from everybody else's Apple Watch. The next tip is to use widgets, and they're right here. And all I did was just pull down, and it brings up this widget gallery here. Now, I have a few that I added in, and I customized just a little bit here, but you can scroll and see all the widgets that you have added there, and you can modify these easily just by tapping and holding. You'll be able to add more widgets to this. You can remove widgets, so if you didn't want the news, you didn't want the weather, you could take those out. Even these little ones here, you can remove them just by tapping on them like that. You can add new ones by tapping the plus up there and you'll see the ones that are available. So let's say we wanted our alarms to be there. We can tap that, add that in. As for the smaller ones, we can tap here. You can see the smaller ones that are available to you. So if you wanted to be able to access your camera, you could right there, tap done. And now that camera, another tip, you can tap on that camera. It's gonna open the camera app on your iPhone and anything that the camera on the iPhone is looking at, you're gonna see it here almost like a secondary screen. So it's pretty cool, especially if you're taking photos and your camera's away from you. And now another place where you can access these widgets is from the watch face. If you swipe up from the bottom, it'll bring up the widgets that you have set up and you can customize them, add more in the exact same way. So that is pretty much it. We've covered a lot in this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, let me know in the comments and hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. As always, there is a full playlist to the Apple Watch series and the iPhone series of tips, tricks, and tutorials in the video description. So definitely check it out if you're interested. If you have any questions or ran into any trouble, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm happy to help you out. I try to respond to every comment that comes my way. And as always, I will see you in the next one.